Hello again, welcome to beautiful Bridlington on Monday, the 15th of July, 2024. Traditional fishing cobbles, quite unusual circumstances today, in my opinion. First of all, it's uh, it's quite warm. It's a uh, 16 C. The sun's shining. There's very little wind, just a breeze. And if you'll notice, of course, the tide is uh, in. I think it was a 5.4 meter high tide today. Actually, it looks as though the tide is just still still coming in. You can tell by that water line there. Unusual because this, of course, is uh, the UK, Northern England. Bridlington is uh, often uh, cold and bleak, even in summer, and if it's not raining, it's windy. This reminds me of my childhood back in the uh, 1950s, when actually the, uh, the summers seemed to be uh, warmer then than currently. Many memories of uh, the early 1950s in this place. In fact, round about 1949, if you came here and went to uh, what used to be perhaps the South Shore Holiday Village over there, was it Granger's Camp? I don't know. Uh, but I remember being there, crawling about as an infant on a veranda, a wooden veranda, on one of those holiday uh, chalets as they're called these days. This was just after World War II, of course, and they were still rationing in force uh, for uh, meat and uh, sweets. But we used to come over from uh, just south of Leeds there in my aunt's uh, old car. In fact, my first toys here were uh, seashells and the uh, white chalk stones that had been washed down from uh, Flamborough Head. This was pretty much a, a magical place at the time and at that age and up to the age of uh, five or six exploring on the beach. And if you're wondering what traffic used to be like in the mid 1950s from my uh, memories then, it was actually worse than it is now. There were literally hundreds of cars pouring into Bridlington from uh, the West Riding of Yorkshire. These cars were uh, more or less old wrecks and ruin com ruins compared with uh, modern cars. Holes in the floor, rust. No MOTs at that time. So anything went as long as it rode along the road. If it didn't have brakes even, the thing still went. get radiators boiling over. There was another route through York, uh, on the outskirts of York, that went up Garrowby Hill, which is a steep hill, and you'd find cars pulling over there onto the side, radiators boiling. There was also almost uh, like an insane phil philosophy at the time of if you had a car, you had to overtake. So there were these cars heading back from uh, Bridlington on the ordinary roads there, and uh, doing crazy overtaking manoeuvres. It's a lot safer now, of course, but the charisma has gone of uh, these old vehicles the uh, older uh, roads and the places where you would pull over you have a cup of tea some of the little cafes there run by the uh, by the generation that had just survived uh, world war Two, and uh, here 
very early morning you will get sometimes a morning uh, Shackleton uh, bomber or coastal command aircraft flying over from that direction and right here but over there would be uh, two Royal Air Force rescue launches left over from uh, World War II because as I mentioned before if you end up in the sea here survival time is very minimal it's measured only in minutes especially in the uh, in the spring and, uh, and winter it's only uh, towards September that the uh, water temperature rises very slightly but to fall into the uh, North Sea around here uh, or uh, crash an aircraft like a Spitfire into the sea you had to get into the rubber survival dinghy it was a matter of uh, life or death because in the water the cold the immersion used to kill people quite quickly probably hard to remember all of that or how it used to be I mean I can remember it and here this uh, wooden structure here rotting away and there you've got Bridlington uh, Crane Wharf this entire area here would be full of uh, fishing cobbles of uh, various uh, sizes some of them quite big and people would uh, go out on a two hour or six hour fishing trip out into the bay there a bit further out perhaps and I think there were more fish around at that time as well and certainly more insects I was just noticing that driving uh, over here today the terrible uh, lack of uh, insect uh, life and how it almost all seems to have been uh, wiped out nothing on the windscreen midsummer arriving here driving at 60 mile an hour uh, 70 mile, hour, mile an hour on the motorway and the windscreen is cleared of insects back in the 50s 60s 70s even the uh, 1980s i remember windscreens being covered in uh, squashed insects amber head there just rising from the mist a low sea mist Because today at Bridlington was uh, forecast to be uh, cool and uh, over overcast, cloudy, with no sun at all. And of course, as usual, the, uh, the weather forecast is uh, is wrong, and much to our surprise, it's a nice day here. Very few people here. Bridlington's lobster fishing fleet. I just think from a, a tourist perspective, Bridlington actually doesn't help itself. I wonder how much it would cost to actually uh, clean this area up. You've got the seats there, looking out onto the harbour, you just look down onto that derelict structure. Wouldn't take much, I wonder if the dredger could do that actually, if the dredger could come in there, knock it all down, scoop it all up. Make it look nice, as though it's a, you know, a continental uh, resort. That said, Bridlington is still, from an architectural point of view, a beautiful place. I'll just the England uh, flag there. In fact, uh, England uh, lost to Spain last night.
over there back in the uh, mid 1950s. I used to listen to uh, a big old uh, radiogram, you know, with a valve radio set, shortwave. Used to just about get Radio Veritas, which I think is somewhere in Italy. And of course, uh, leaving the UK in those days to go on holiday, no one did it. Perhaps towards the end of the 1950s, uh, early 1960s, that changed. But in the early to mid 1950s, there was nothing like that. Coming here, you know, was the equivalent of uh, you know going to Spain or something like that. The whole the whole place was geared up for that. So you've got a good experience. It's totally uh, unlike now, where it's uh, pretty much a uh, commercial uh, fishing port for the, uh, the world-class leading uh, lobster fleet there. Certainly the best in Europe. But times change, of course. And of course, it's good to just be able to get on an aircraft. Just recently, we uh, we got on an aircraft at Manchester and flew to Italy in about about two two and a half hours, something like that. No effort whatsoever. Amazing how times change. And yet, back in those days, we were quite happy with what we had. Well, let's just say. Back in the days of coal, lots of uh, smoke, of course, and pollution. But whatever the situation might be at home, school was always warm, you know, with a, a coal fired uh, boiler and warm classrooms. Back at home, you might have a bedroom uh, with no heat on whatsoever in uh, midwinter. And I'm referring now to the, the winter of uh, 1962, one, two, or three when it was extremely cold and ice formed on the uh, glass inside uh, your bedroom. None of that now, of course. And back in those days, and well into the uh, 1970s, there was a heavy industry area in West Yorkshire based on textiles and, uh, and, and wool, where basically, back in those days, the tail end of uh, the British Empire, as it was, uh, totally exploited uh, countries like India. Manufacturing though in the factories in big mills uh, in the uh, West Riding of Yorkshire and in other places over in Lancashire, for example. Funded the lifestyle where you could uh, perhaps afford one of the old cars, which were again quite expensive in those days, and didn't last very long. Uh, and uh, you know, people would then be able to come to this resort and the money would be there to, to spend at Bridlington on holiday. Whereas now, of course, as I've just been implying, it's far cheaper just to get a, a flight out and go somewhere else where you've got more, more or less guaranteed uh, warmth or heat. I've noticed there are very few people here, even though it's uh, it's past midsummer. And the reason, of course, is who's prepared to risk it? You know, to book a holiday here in summer, and you might have a full week where it's raining and cold and windy. Very difficult to even get it right on a a day trip with the uh, unreliability, I think, of the uh, weather forecast currently. I've arrived at Bridlington in many different vehicles over the decades. Firstly, under my own steam as it were, a Honda S90 that would do 60 miles an hour and in which uh, I went right down to London, through the centre of London. 
and uh, also I very briefly had a Bond mini car. Bond, you might be thinking of James Bond there and something really exciting, but I'll try to find a picture of that and, uh, and post it. This had, uh, it was a three wheeler, one wheel at the front, two at the back, and it had uh, cable operated brakes just on the uh, back wheels. And you used to have a bell crank underneath it were connected by cables to the uh, brake pedal you could never get the uh, brake braking equally on both of those back wheels that used to drag to one side when you put the brakes on just imagine that it had a 200 cc villiers uh, two-stroke engine under the bonnet and uh, you would open the bonnet up and you would kick start it had a kick start lever because this was actually an old motorcycle engine under the bonnet so you could have a choice of either trying to start it on the starter with which you had a, a decompression lever you held down with your left foot inside the car you'd spin the engine over on the starter motor and uh, then you'd let go of the decompression lever and hope that the thing would fire up before the engine came to a stop this had a fuel tank actually inside the car uh, where your feet went there was a cylindrical tank right inside the cabin there along behind where your feet were and it had a, a reserve no fuel gauge it had a reserve tank where you would reach out, the engine would start to sputter and cut out, you would reach out with your foot and just tap this uh, lever and that would put it onto reserve, which they would then do in about another 20 miles. Wait, believe it or not, this thing would do 60 miles an hour on the flat uh, and it was also a soft top. And I once came to Bridlington that in that one Easter and I very nearly froze to death, it was incredible. You know, it was below freezing the temperature, no heat in the car, got a canvas roof there, and you're actually seated about, literally about six inches from the ground, it's so low down. Suddenly, the, as you're going along at any speed, the chain would come off, because this had a, it had a motorcycle engine under the front and the body, it had a chain, chain drive to the front wheels. The engine was actually mounted on a bracket structure, uh, engine bearers onto the front wheel so that when you turn the steering wheel in the car the whole engine and front wheel turn together now if you can imagine very much like a motorcycle you've got the chain there from the engine connected to the front wheel of this thing uh, and then you would have uh, two long screwdrivers and some rags and you would have to get underneath underneath the uh, underneath the bonnet there and with these uh, screwdrivers big long screwdrivers lever the uh, old chain back onto the old sprockets and these sprockets were extremely worn which is why i managed to get it cheaply in the first place i think new sprockets weren't available because this vehicle was actually about uh, 15 years old it was uh, literally only one year younger than me and that was when i was uh, 16 in about 1960 uh, four, five. and uh, this vehicle, bearing in mind uh, what uh, Yorkshire used to be like in the, these days, there wasn't much money around and this vehicle had been lovingly maintained and it had had 13 different owners in its uh, 15 years of life. Do you think if you saw that on a modern car, the car would actually be wrecked, wouldn't it? You know, no one's looked after it. But this thing had been extremely well looked after because the people who had owned it would perhaps be working down uh, the local mine. Uh, very much uh, working class uh, Yorkshire, where having something like this, where you could sit together, you and your girlfriend or you and your wife would be a tremendous thing. And it probably got sold on as people had families because it was literally a two seater, bench seat inside. If you had uh, any children at all, you'd have to get rid of it and buy something else. The most exciting vehicle I've ever owned because it was so charismatic. I'm talking charisma here. I'm not talking about speed. I've had speed on fast motorcycles, you know, not to 66 seconds, that sort of thing. But for sheer charisma, this uh, Bond three-wheel mini car with its cable-operated brakes was such a tremendous thing. I only had it a few months and then the sprockets became irretrievably worn out. Uh, along with the chain and it was impossible to buy new sprockets they'd stopped making them a long long time before that uh, but I did have the uh, pleasure of having that and the longest trip I did was that trip to Bridlington uh, one Easter with no heating <laughs> and, the, and the thing simply flew along you know it was so nippy and fast 
because it was only fit for one person really if you've got two people in it it really slowed it down so I'd probably be on my own in this thing age 16 and not weighing very much I was uh, not fully grown at that time and uh, not too heavy which made it all the better of course those times very rapidly uh, came to an end passed my driving test age 17 so it was 16 when I had this Bond uh, mini car you could drive one on a 16 year old motorcycle license as soon as I was 17 passed my uh, driving test and uh, bought uh, an Austin uh, minivan which is another story perhaps for another day if you're wondering about safety on that Bond uh, mini car well there was no safety it had a, a steering wheel which was basically a steel spike sticking towards your, your chest with a, a wheel pinned on it and uh, oh, no seat belts of course but let's talk about Bridlington again and, uh, and the UK you've just seen uh, the uh, Eden Mobility uh, store there regain your mobility this is one of the often forgotten benefits of, uh, of the United Kingdom and it's been like that for decades that it's taken for granted now that you have access to places just look at this that sort of access for anyone with a with difficulty uh, walking or, or who needs to use a wheelchair or a mobility scooter or perhaps a walking frame like those ladies because you go to other places you really notice it we went to Naples there's nothing like that and I think in Naples if you've uh, if you've got some sort of walking uh, problem you've got to get around by car or taxi or stay in the house uh, in the Philippines there have been many times it's even worse so many people have gained freedom of movement in the UK this easy access to uh, shops which was brought about as I implied by legislation a long time ago this is what makes the UK a great country although it might at first glance seem to be a good thing uh, to go on holiday in certain countries there's no guarantee that you're going to have uh, that sort of uh, access built into the environment that you're in anyway that's perhaps enough enough for now and uh, it just remains to say i hope you enjoy this uh, video and uh, goodbye for now take care now goodbye